No. Uh -huh. I was Uh, roll call shows Mr. Jaffe is uh, gone, but everyone else is present. No public hearing. We have three things on the consent agenda. Anything to get pulled by the directors or the public? Oh. I do not. Well, I can't find the... Get to it. But I don't think I have anything to pull. I don't have anything to pull, so if no one's pulling any, then I'll move the approve the consent agenda. And I'll second it. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, this brings up oral communications. Any item not on tonight's agenda for the public to talk about? Thank you. Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. Um, I just want to thank your staff for a good uh, budget presentation. I got here through kind of the middle of it, but I thought it was very good. And um, I just wanted to point out, I talked with um, Mr. Dufour afterwards, there, there was some discussion about the quail run tank um, supplying pressure for Cathedral and um, Vistamar Court. And so uh, my question was, what about the upper Montoyon tank? that I know was put in to uh, supply gravity-fed water for those areas. So he cleared up my question, but I just want to make, make sure that, um, that you folks haven't forgotten that it's a good tank up there on the top of the hill above Monte Toyon Camp. And, and I was in, interested to find out that the water from that tank stops at the top of the hill there on Cathedral Drive. Otherwise, the pressure would be too great. So that was um, interesting news to me from Mr. DeFore. Um, I also had some questions for Mr. DeFore about the status of the Granite Way well. And um, I have observed there are two buckets, containers that have just kind of showed up behind the pipe. So um, many people are wondering what's going on with that well. And in fact, um, I did email Mr. Dufour, and he assured me at a public meeting at the Rio Sands Motel when there was discussion about with Supervisor Zach Friend, he called it a monitoring well. So if any of you have a good relationship with him, you might want to just clear that up because Mr. Dufour did assure me that it is a production well at Granite Way. Um, Outside of that, I just was sorry to see the 50-foot geyser come up in the middle of the Aptos Village project last week, and um, your, your good staff responded and assured me that the lines will have to be disinfected because many of the soils in that project are contaminated. So he says the second time it's happened to, and they didn't call you right away. <laughs> anyway, it was quite a bit of excitement in Aptos Village. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any director comments? Guess not. Okay. Reports. Board planning calendar 5.1. Yeah, I mean, not a lot really to say today. I, I think Tracy may want to add a few words. Um, I had mentioned at the last board meeting, excuse me, I had mentioned at the last board meeting um, that we had set aside um, Public Service Employees Recognition Week. Uh, the, that, that is happening actually next week, um, May 7th through the 11th. And I did want to, um, we had kind of had a tentative plan. We've nailed some of that down. And it looks like we'll be having our um, managers hosted breakfast, which is something that we've done several times for staff. That'll be on Friday morning, the 11th. And we hope to be able to have an ice cream social that's planned for Monday afternoon, May 7th, um, probably starting at around 345. 
So those are the two events, if uh, board members are interested in attending that um, we would love for you to show. Breakfast. When's the breakfast? Um, the breakfast, w we usually get that started at 8 a.m. An email to the yeah, I'll be sending it. We haven't sent staff the notice yet either, just because there were some okay. questions about what we were going to be doing and when. We had some last minute decisions about who was going to be at Aqua. Um, and so that changed some of our thought process a little bit. So hopefully we can get that notice out to uh, both you and all of our staff tomorrow. Great. Okay. Great. And I'll just uh, note that on the 17th of May is the uh, MGA meeting. And then ag again, of course, on the 23rd will be the uh, GSP uh, meetings. And it, it might, uh, if the board would like, uh, behoove, behoove them to have maybe a presentation by Cameron or Georgina or somebody from Hydrometrics come and present just to give an update of where they're at with the sustainability indicators and how it's progressing. I mean, I could certainly give you a, you know, my, my perspective, but uh, the group is starting to, to, to dive into it a little bit. We tackled um, seawater intrusion, uh, what's acceptable, what's unacceptable, where is that bottom line, and we haven't gone, we'll, we'll go through what's the, the least acceptable thing or, you know, where they draw the line in the sand and then come back to all of them and say, what, what are we really aiming for, though? So uh, it is starting to, to move along. Okay. I might just like comment on that too because I went to that meeting and I uh, not as a member of the audience and uh, it, it was it had a few glitches that I thought maybe could be corrected that we should make an effort to make sure yeah uh, and that is that it was hard to hear Cameron period so a lot of the people especially a lot of the people who are inexperienced members of the panel had a hard time hearing him and understanding him and uh, so that added to it. I think it would be, and I think it would really be a good idea to have uh, Cameron come and review where they're going with that. That'd be great. I agree. Yeah. So. Yeah. Based on Director Christensen's input, w what I'm going to recommend to the committee and Ms. Steinbrenner, you'll probably appreciate this. I think what we realize is that is the, the people from the public sit behind the speaker with the with they're facing the back of the speaker. So who's ever gonna be speaking, say we have the hydrologists or engineers up there, maybe they should sit at the other table looking out. So simple things like that, and if we need to ramp it up, um, probably help out. I think a microphone out. would yeah. be helpful for him. So I just, you microphone is always good. I just wanted to point out just, I, it's not something for me, it's just I just noticed that the June 5th meetings at the Community Foundation, just as a heads up, it looks like. Yeah. So still 6 p.m. I assume, but. Right, and got to be out by nine. That out shouldn't nine. be an issue, but uh, yeah. good thing to note, yeah. This room was not available. And so I don't forget, I'm not going to be here for the 15th. Okay. But I'll um, post it on my door and do it in my apartment. Uh, <laughs> so you want to do a tele mm -hmm. of, of May? May okay. 15th, yeah. I'll send you a phone number to call. Okay. Okay, that'd be great. I'm flying at 6 a.m. the next morning to go get my daughter from college. <laughs> nice. Okay. A couple things I'd like to see on the calendar mm. uh, is uh, schedule is our pipe test report, you know, how that's going and uh, okay. whenever that is okay. ready, but it'd be nice to see it. But Are you ta oh, you're talking about reporting out on, not yes. yeah, as an item on a board? Okay, great. Current status kind yeah. of thing, when okay. that's appropriate. And the next is the status of the meter AMI kind of work whenever that's appropriate. Okay. What about the hydrology study? The, the model? The model. Yeah, when's that? Yeah. Uh, big, Did didn't we you get mention that? the model? Yeah, that'll come out when it's uh, when it's ready to, to be <laughs> presented. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the official word. Yeah. <laughs> Just put that on the that's calendar. Sooner, then. huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You know, I've been dying to see that model. I've been just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. Turn the crank and watch the water come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's uh, move right along. We have no will serve letters. Um, I think the next thing is the general manager performance review and compensation consideration. Yeah, so thank you for this opportunity. The, the main focus of this memo is really 
about what is the appropriate pay for the general manager position. There's a second component that's re related to me. It, it, it's hard to separate the two. But the focus is really on what is pro what may be considered the appropriate uh, pay for the for the this this position, and let me talk about process for a minute. So, uh, Tracy, our uh, human resource manager to my left here, surveyed these different agencies. You, you see them listed here. There's 23, and that's how the salary, average salary, and different uh, other parameters were um, estimated. And then uh, average salary being here. And then a compaction study, too, from a data, state database shown here. And Tracy, if I'm wrong on anything, let me know. Uh, of these various 23 similar agencies, all this is 2016 data, but the spread or compaction shouldn't have changed that much. If anything, it probably got a little wider. In the, and that's from the general manager position to the next highest salary. So when we talk about compaction and look at those numbers, that's where this is coming from, this table. And when we talk about salary, average salary and benefits, it's coming from this table. However, before I dive into that, one thing I wanted to, um, I think it's really key to the discussion, and that is, you know, when you're considering a, a GM position, uh, and I consider all these positions leadership positions, but that uh, position in particular, you want to be competitive in the marketplace, not only for people to, to bring them in, but to sustain them too. And, you know, make no doubt about it, we're trying to uh, have in-house capability that can be grown and done that and and serve that role, but you also want the opportunity to potentially look out and be attractive. But th what I wanted to sh and this is the why behind it uh, being competitive and leadership impact on staff engagement. Basically, the best leaders en engender three times more staff engagement than the worst leaders, and this is uh, from the. the sources are cited down here. So that's great. Uh, good leadership gets better engagement. What's that really mean? And I could have tried to do this in a, a different way that relates to customer service because that's really what we're about. But I, I did it. It took the data directly from uh, one of the uh, large workforce studies that's done. And what they say is that, uh, and these are over, you know, usually thousands of companies and people and that sort of thing. The engagement matters if you look at a, a profit, operating profit thing. Poor performing leaders or average uh, low traditional in, uh, engagement companies turn a profit about that and with high engagement it's three times that much. So the nut of this is good, great leadership can increase uh, staff engagement by three times, which results in, and I look at this when I say this, three times better value for our customer. So we don't wanna sell that part short. That's, and, and actually I presented this to uh, some people at Aqua and JPIA and it, it helped inform their process to start a leadership program, which is very exciting, which they have going on today. And, uh, they actually took this mo the, the model that was presented there in the top of that. So let me, let me get to it. So what the results of the salary survey show is that the current district GM salary is this. The average GM salary of the 23 similar agencies surveyed is that. And the difference, the current district GM salary is 8.3% below the average salary of the 23 agencies surveyed. Now, interestingly, that's one main component people look at, and it says here the other um, parameters considered in that table are on, on, on par roughly with the districts. So the other parameter that's usually looked at is the percent compaction. And that's the difference of the GM position to the next highest level. And that in our situation, is 11% uh, compacted. Um, and generally there's a 25% spread 
between the, the GM position and the next highest paid position. Now, interestingly enough, uh, and I think it it's supports each other, if you take the current GM salary and put it at the average, it brings this spread to 23%, so almost directly in line uh, on both factors. So kind of supporting evidence on that. Let's see. See my other, let me look at my notes for a second. So, okay, so great. So that's, that's the, the general, generality of it applying to the, the GM position. Now, the other component of this is, is my performance rating by the board and staff, uh, the managers. They did a 360 anonymous uh, rating. And they've done this for three years. You've done this on me for three years in a row, and I'm very appreciative of the feedback. There was some great feedback ranging from um, well, I don't want to get into specifics, but honest feedback on both sides. Things I'm doing well, or at least perceived as doing well, and things I need to improve on, and we went over those in closed session. But what I did was able, you, you can, because it's numerical on 17 of the uh, questions that are uh, <coughs> graded, and convert those to a percentage performance, distill it down to one number. And so uh, when I first started, the number was, what is that, 83% or something like that. And it's steadily gone up to 94%, I think, was the current rating. And you see a progression here. This graph is really important to me. And one of the reasons I do these kind of things, I've been doing 360 surveys for probably, I don't know, I'm going to say running on six to seven years. And... Um, what they reflect, whether you're running at a department or an organization or whatever, I think they're more reflective. They're just as reflective of the people giving the performance review and reflective of the organization, uh, in my opinion. And there's, there's some information to support that. So I, in my viewpoint, this is really a reflection of how the agency has grown, the people have grown. I, I think we're good, maybe a little better than good. We're certainly not excellent, but we have the right people in place, and that's the key. That is absolutely the key to, to get there, and we are on that trajectory. There are, there are going to be bumps. There's going to there, – we're always stuff, you know. Imagine a 45-member family or something, what that would be like. But – I love this because I think it uh, shows not only maybe some self-improvement, but uh, improvement for the organization. Okay. So uh, I have other, a few other things, um, but I'll leave it at that for right now. Thank you. Okay. And I just wanted to um, point out a couple things. One is just we do have an amazing crew of managers, too. Yeah. and. And to me, it's really important to see that they all want to keep working here and with you because I think um, we need all that talent. We've got a lot, a lot to do, and I really appreciate all of them. And I especially appreciate um, how you treat everybody with respect, the people that work for you, the customers, the board. And um, I absolutely never doubt your integrity. So thank you. Thank you. I'll second that one. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a measure of the whole organization and the speed with which we completed the budget discussion, in fact, is part of that, uh, part of how well things are running for every, you know, in the district because of you all. And Ed, Juan, so I, th I think it's a really good idea to have an open review every year just to see where we are. And a 360 review I'd never heard of before, but it's really illuminating yeah any public comment on this item thank you Becky Steinbrunner I I think this is interesting and if I were in your place I'd feel a little awkward having um, the general manager come and 
ask for a raise and put forth all the information to support it. I think I would feel more comfortable if I were in your shoes deciding this in closed session rather than in front of him. We and can't I'm legally. Oh, you can't it legally. It has to be an open nope. session. I see. Oh, we can do the review, but no salary. It has to be oh. in sunshine. All right. All right. So well, that's good information. <laughs> Um, I, I also think it's um, interesting that it's that the, the general manager himself is presenting this information and not your director of human resources. Um, I've never seen that done before, and um, I just want to make that comment. I, um, I haven't always felt I get straight answers from correspondence to your general manager. But I appreciate that um, sometimes he's in a very difficult position to give uh, clear answers. But um, in terms of how the um, pirated water connection on Granite Way was handled with the Aptos Village project, I feel that, ne that, that needed to be handled differently. And he, r Mr. Duncan, wrote letters to the people, ratepayers of yours, who were trying to report the water that was being used unmetered without any backflow prevention, and they were brushed aside. It wasn't honest communication. So I just want to put that in the hopper and, and be very honest. Um, and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, back to us. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the, the particular salary adjustment. And I am too, and I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I am too. I'm waiting for discussion, but I mean, I'll I guess the only the only thing that I would add that is a little bit of a concern is that the water manager for the city of Santa Cruz, which is considerably bigger, us is 198, 171. So um, I don't. I, I think we should go up. The question in my mind is just simply how high should we go up? Right. Do we go to the average? One thing I might suggest, and uh, I'll just put it out there because it could, I'm a believer in performance is the ultimate mark. <coughs> here, here is the current salary. There are steps between the, um, all the things, and that range ranges, I don't know, up to about 3,500 bucks. But this is what I wanted to show you, and that's each manager can progress over that. But this is something that was identified in the, um, a year ago. Uh, not actually uh, uh, that that I was uh, needed improvement upon, and it's th th basically the fundamentals of administration for an agency, and I took that to heart. I applied. You've got to have like over 400 points to even get in there. It's years of experience and um, other things, and so I've been studying for this test. Not so much lately because I've been busy, but I uh, plan on taking it, and so um, and hopefully passing it. Uh, and part of the, and this is kind of the, the topics they, they cover and all that, and I think it'll serve the district well and our customers, uh, for me and may, you know, maybe other people, to uh, have something like this. So I just float it, whatever, maybe part of it could be contingent upon a successful uh, completion of that or certification. Well, I was basing um, my approval of that, uh, that raise based on the salaries of the managers mm -hmm. and that compression, that compression data. And I, it I think it creates a space for everybody to advance in the future. If, you know, there's a proper balance between the people who are being supervised and the manager. And by the way, we are the, s we approve the, salary the the ultimately the evaluation and the salary of the general manager and not the human resources director so 
Uh, anyway, I I feel that is one of the that is one of the reasons. I think this would add to it. I think that I think that we already have as an organization the direction to excel in these areas. So I think getting a certification wouldn't be it would be icing on the cake, so to speak. But uh, so I. I think you should be able to do it. I don't know how this, the managers in this district could have the time right now to pursue yeah. a sort of actual yeah. certification. Well, it's definitely beside your night bed and you know, your wife says enough, <laughs> put the book down, <laughs> <laughs> go back. Michelle, you have input? I just appreciate that you're um, willing to try to improve and accept that you need to be, Im you know, you have right. areas of improvement. I have not seen that in too many managers, and I do appreciate that. I think that's a great leadership skill, just that. Thank you. For me, that puts him at the average, but I don't think he's an average manager. Yeah, at least for, him, for us again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. So I'll, I'll just make the motion to go ahead and go with the. And I'll the second it. Okay. Motion and second. I don't think this is roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, Ron. Thank, Thank you. you. We go to 6.3, District Organizational and Staffing Review. I've got it, Tracy. Okay, thanks. Which we've seen <coughs> before. Um, at the last meeting, I presented to the board an informational item. Um, it was presented in the packet as uh, an action item, but uh, as you'll recall, on the April 17th meeting, I prefaced my presentation, it was late in the night, um, uh, but the real reason was we wanted a little bit more time to talk to our employee groups um, in regards to some of the details on this um, uh, recommendation for district organization um, and staffing review. So I'll cover uh, briefly the bases. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, <coughs> The um, first position that we took a look at um, was the equipment mechanic position. That's a longstanding position with the district. It's a single position. And um, we have one incumbent who's been working with this district for a number of years, very qualified individual um, with a great skill set. Um, we recognized that that particular job description needed uh, some revision. And um, it was prompted by a, a classification study that actually was initiated way back, I believe it was in 2012 or 2013 before I started with the district. It had been started by a consultant and it was shelved. Um, we took some time uh, to talk about bringing that study back and then it, it took a little bit longer through the analysis than we anticipated um, quite some time. Um, through that process, we gathered um, all kinds of information in regards to that particular position, and we recognized through that study that we have a need as an organization to maintain an equipment mechanic classification as it stands um, based upon uh, the large number of um, equipment and tools that this position is responsible for maintaining and keeping safe and, and in working order. But we also recognize that the incumbent in the position um, has had, as in HR speak, a gradual accretion of duties, which really prompted us to take a look at um, creating a new job classification um, through that reclassification process. We didn't want to eliminate the equipment mechanic due to the need, but we really recognized that his duties had changed over time. Um, and so we are proposing a new job description of equipment utilities mechanic um, to recognize that work that he's doing in our system. Through that process and the discussion, um, we also recognized that maybe the organizational structure needed to be looked at in regards to our operations and maintenance um, um, distribution. Currently, the equipment mechanic is a direct report to the O&M manager, but that position spends an awful lot of time, especially with the, with the change in duties, um, uh, with a focus on some of the utilities, um, spends a lot of time working directly with the operations supervisor. And so through that process, we really recognize that it might make sense to be able to have that as a direct report in a supervisory capacity um, to the, um, to the operations supervisor instead of a direct report to the O&M manager. 
The O&M manager will still hold some um, responsibility and overview of some of the, the details um, that the equipment uti uh, utilities mechanic will be responsible for. For instance, um, fleet purchasing recommendations and um, you know decisions that uh, encompass the entire unit. Uh, but we really felt that it made more sense to have that direct reporting relationship to the operations supervisor. Um, we anticipate a retirement in that very critical position as operations supervisor. And so through that discussion, organizational review, we really recognized we needed to make some changes and revisions to that job description to make sure that it was up to date for any future recruitments that um, we, we, uh, we see coming up. Um, so um, with that said, I am proposing um, by motion that the board um, approve the job class family for mechanic by creating the new classification of the equipment utilities mechanic. Um, there's a recommended salary placement that's attached to that um, as identified in the salary schedule in the packet. Um, also, uh, looking to uh, approve the existing classification revisions of the equipment mechanic and the operations supervisor and approve the revisions to the existing organizational structure as identified in the proposed org chart, which, which is also listed um, as attachment number five. Any questions of Tracy? No. See it in your, it. In <laughs> your uh, discussions with the other folks, were there any changes that they suggested that got made here? Um, we made some corrections. There weren't any changes made to the job descriptions. We worked really closely with the equipment mechanic in developing the job description, the new job description, as well as revising the existing job description. Um, that's part of the process that we go through is we work closely with the incumbents um, as the subject matter experts to make sure that what we're putting in the job description. So subsequent discussions um, didn't change anything necessarily, but we did work out some questions that they had just in regards to um, some of the structure and, and reporting. Um, the one change that you will recognize in here from the original uh, uh, package um, is that through um, discussion with the incumbent, we actually landed on um, a salary placement that is a little bit different from the normal classification, reclassification step placement. That's usually done at a promotional um, um, organizational structure and that's dictated by our MOU agreement um, and usually when someone goes through a promotion which this move would necessitate then we have a 3.5 percent um, promotional rate to move to the next um, range salary range in this particular case because this uh, study was initiated years ago um, was shelved, brought back, and took an awfully long time for us to make feel very comfortable through our analysis. We didn't feel that he should be penalized because of that timeline process, and he was very, very patient through the process. So the recommendation um, in terms of his particular salary placement on that range would be to keep him at the level um, that he's currently at on the salary schedule. Kay. Any public comment on this item? What's your pleasure, folks? I will move approval of all four motions. I'll second. Okay, I'll second. Um, that means we're all set. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? That's unanimous. So we one have one uh, additional item, which is a written communication from Mr. Tom Stumbaugh. Read it. Shall we read it? Any comments or questions or changes to it? Response? Public. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, after the budget uh, part of the meeting ended, I actually went to Mr. Stumbaugh's house. He wanted to come and read this letter into the record, um, and I'm a little worried about his health. He wasn't there, and he has been having some difficulties. So. Um, I'm sure that he will be fine and he will come speak with you at your next meeting about this communication. But he is, as a rate payer, very concerned about a lot of the questions that he sees in the, um, the relationship between Soquel Creek Water District and the Aptos Village project developers. 
Um, the water demand offsets um, cannot be verified for the work at Cabrillo. The um, facilities manager at Cabrillo at the time, Mr. Joe Nugent, did in fact say that there were a lot of problems. He had to call back the crews many times because the work just wasn't done. And he didn't know if it ever got done. He doesn't work there at Cabrillo anymore. He just recently took a job at Monterey Peninsula College. But I spoke with him and he um, basically said, well, he really wasn't involved in the project. It was kind of dumped on his lap and Doug Deaver uh, kind of shepherded it through. But that there is no paper trail for this, I think, bears um, scrutiny and investigation. And I've asked you for that, and you refused. And I, I really think that there needs to be um, better verification of the water demand offset credits. I am personally concerned about the $10,000 payment to Magnolia Tree Investments that supposedly are for water demand offset credits. And this is a, a large company owned by Chinese, it looks like Chinese investors in Fremont. So um, I'm in the process of getting um, public records information about that. But more to Mr. Stumbaugh's letter, I, I think um, as a ratepayer, he would really like to see this whole thing investigated. And um, he lives right next to all this work and it's difficult for him to watch. And he is very diligent, as Mr. Duncan knows, at saving water. And um, it bothers him a lot. So I hope that Mr. Stumbaugh will come and address you about this at your next meeting. And I think that he does want a written response to his letter from staff or the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> So, have we uh, looked into this, and are we comfortable that the offsets were done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me respond. I, th I think it's important to for the benefit of our customers because I think that there's some mis misinformation there, Ms. Steinbrunner. Uh, first of all, Joe Nugent, when I'd, I'd heard what you'd said before, so I approached Joe before he left, and he gave me a very different story to what you're saying. So I will also. Uh, say that we do have verification papers. It, it may not be what you want to see, but it is a verifica It is verifying that the, t the toilets and urinals were done. And our own staff, um, Roy Sykes, uh, reviewed many of those, and including myself. I even went there during part of the um, retrofit and, and saw them in the upper part of the campus near where they do the farmer's market just to, to see it in action. Um, but the ultimate proof is the restrooms. One can go to the restrooms, see the, the high efficiency fixtures that are there, um, besides the paperwork that we keep. So, thank you. Thank you. I'd, li I'd just like to comment too. Um, we, I did one of those WDO uh, low flow toilets, the 0.8 gallons and on my house and my son staying in to go to college and we got a letter from the district for saving water just from one toilet <laughs> you know it does make it, you don't think that it makes any kind of a difference but if you look at the water demand and the pumping rate through the through the years when the WDO program started up water use water demand did decrease by almost it was projected to be double what it is now and it's half of what it is for the same number of people so it, somewhere that conservation wasn't just people hauling water washing dishes in little buckets and things like that it was this water demand offset program really made a significant difference and so and Cabrillo College was a huge number of toilets so it had to have contributed to this you know this effort so so that's why we aren't as worried. It, 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 people wanted those toilets. They weren't going to put up with a sham, a sham payment to, you know, not get the toilet. So they really make a difference. So if there is nothing else on that one, uh, there is no closed session, and so we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good meeting. See you, June.